Dear students, in this module, I'm going to provide you with two examples of dot plots. To start, let's first review what the dot plots were. Dot plots employed a dot matrix representation where you place the two sequences that you are trying to align on top and on the left side. And the nucleotides or amino acids that matched were represented by dots within the matrix. Next, you connected these dots which lied adjacent to each other on the diagonal and in some cases there were some dots which were non-adjacent to any other dot and were treated as noise. Here I'm giving you a dot plot for cytochrome C from tuna fish and humans. So as you can see the cytochrome C molecule from these two species is very nicely aligned which is shown by this very long diagonal that is visible on the plot. So this is one of the beauties of the dot plots where you can simply uh, visually inspect the alignment. However, there are these dots besides the diagonal which are matching amino acids but they are not diagonally connected to others. So therefore, these can be treated as noise. So the benefits. So what are the benefits of the dot plots? I was just elaborating that. The dot plots provide you a global view of the alignment between the two sequences. So they not only align the sequences, but they also give you a visual summary of the alignment. The sequence alignments, they appear as stacked diagonals and you can pick them off and these are your alignment results. Here. I will give you a sequence alignment between human LDL receptor protein against itself. So you have this protein sequence on top as well as on the left side. So in the previous example, we had cytochrome C from the two different species. But in this case, we have the same protein that has been put on the top and left side. So as you can see that the diagonal is continuous. And clear here. So non-broken diagonal means that the two sequences on top and on the left they match exactly. However, if you look at these areas in the dot plot, you see a lot of dots and noise. So I want to introduce another concept here that will help you to reduce this noise. So this will be uh, this figure is already provided in your textbook and you can go back and refer to it. So what if we say that we will only consider those diagonals that are connected to at least six other dots in a diagonal. So any diagonal that is less than six dots will be left out. So here, the blue dots, they are six in number. So if you have a diagonal like this, then we will only consider that. But if you have a case where only two or three dots are connected in the diagonal, then we're going to reject them because the threshold that we have defined to select a diagonal is six dots. So if you do such a filtering or thresholding, then the same plot is as follows. So I will show you the difference between the two plots again. So here is the plot without thresholding and here is the plot after thresholding. So clearly this plot is a better plot because it can not only tell you about the alignment, it can also remove the noise and the shorter matches. So the threshold in this case is 7. Uh, uh, comparison dots and anything that is less than 7, any diagonal that is less than 7 dots is rejected. So you can clearly see that the portions of the sequences that are matching besides the overall sequence match in this plot. So this is also provided in your textbook and you can refer to that. So in conclusion, the dot plots help you to align and visualize 
the alignment between two biological sequences. The sequences can be the protein sequences or the DNA or RNA sequences. Also, thresholding can help you to identify the longer diagonals within the dot plot. So by increasing the threshold, you can re reduce the number of diagonals that are left within the dot plot.